Hi guys, I'm Kenzo from lovelifedrawing.com. In the last lesson, we started to put together our rib cage shape with our super stick man and our pelvic area shape. Now, things might still be a little bit wonky or out of place, which is fine. It's hard to get these initial lines just right unless you're an expert. Um, and in the future, getting things in the right position or in the right proportions at the right angles will be intuitive and instinctive because you're more used to it. But for now, we're going to use measurement techniques. So we're consciously going to measure angles and lengths and use our measurements to help get the drawing a bit closer to correct. Let's talk about angles first. Is each body part at the right angle on our stick man? To measure angles we aren't sure of, we can use a pencil or in this case a coffee stirrer. Hold out your pencil against the pose to determine the angle of each element and then transfer the pencil, retaining the same angle to your page. How do your angles compare? So we can check the overall angle of the legs, arms, torso center line, or anything else we're concerned about. If something is wrong, don't start rubbing things out immediately. Those incorrect lines are valuable. They're gonna help us to get the correct lines. We're gonna use that wrong line recognizing what was wrong with it as a sort of reference point to understand where the right line should be. And after you've put down the right line and you're happy with it, you can get rid of the old line. We can also check the angles between different points in the pose. The angle between the two heels, for example. Or here we're checking the angle of the line that runs from one elbow all the way across to the opposite shoulder. Now let's tackle alignment. We can start by imagining a drop line, just a vertical line running straight down to the ground from a part of the body like the earlobe. Here Mako is checking the drop lines from the armpits. The ear is often a useful drop line since that line is a line of balance in many standing poses. And we can do the same with horizontal lines. Look at the point at the tip of the elbow for example and imagine a horizontal line across from it. What else is falling on that line in the pose and how does your drawing compare? The points that you use for your horizontal or vertical lines are up to you and depend on what's most useful for that pose or what your drawing needs, what you're concerned about in it. Next we'll measure lengths and distances. Remember that most of this work will be done with your eyes intuition rather than your analytical mind. But when you're confused or unsure, when something doesn't look right but you can't quite figure out what, you can get your analytical mind in to do some work. You can measure a length or distance by holding out your pencil along the length of the thing you're measuring. Keep one eye closed and align the tip of the pencil with one end of the length. Then place your thumbnail on the pencil at the point that lines up with the other end of the length. If you're drawing a live model, you'll want to hold out the pencil at arm's length to ensure that the pencil is in the same position relative to your eye between measurements. Now the point is not to transfer the length measured on your pencil to the page. The aim here is to measure relative lengths and distances. In other words, how long something is relative to another thing from your point of view. It should be the same in the real figure as it is in your drawing. To keep things simple, you could always compare everything to the length of the head. In other words, how many head lengths is in the torso? This requires that you measure the length of the head and then transfer that length onto the torso to see how many head lengths fit inside it. For example, in this drawing, Mako finds that there's one head length to the nipple line, another to the belly button, and a third to the crotch. 
and then she can check that that's the same in her drawing. Sometimes it's useful to choose two lengths to measure the pose, a shorter one for measuring smaller lengths and a longer one for bigger measurements. For example, Mako used head lengths for the smaller distances, but now she's checking the length of the legs against the length of the torso and the head combined. As an exercise for all these measurement techniques, we're going to draw a series of constructions for poses viewed from the front. And let's just stick to standing poses for now. And we're going to measure lots of different things about the pose and check it on our construction. Usually we wouldn't want to do so much measuring and we wouldn't want to be so analytical. But for this exercise and this lesson, we will. We're going to measure the following on each one the height and width of the whole pose in terms of head lengths, the distance between the chin and the nipples, the nipples and the belly button, and the length of the arms and the legs, again in terms of head lengths, the angles of the torso center line, of the arms, of the legs, and the angle of the line that runs between the two heels. We're going to check alignments. What lies on the vertical line dropping straight down from the ear? And how about the horizontal line running across from one elbow? And then you should add more alignments and more angles and lengths that you think need measuring for that particular pose. All right, so we started to practice the skills we need to get things in the right place and in the right proportion. We're almost ready to start fleshing out our figure. But before we do that, we're just going to learn about the modifications to this process we need to make when we're looking at poses from the side and the back. So that's what we're going to do in the next lesson. You're doing really well, guys. Keep it up.